what do we need when we do baseline in trance? We're going to be working with trance today. So in trance music, baseline is the one of the sounds that is very fundamental, as I said in the beginning, together with the kick. It's the only sound, apart from some sub effects and some sub pad in your breakdown, and other very specific sounds which carries a low end. So when you want to hear a sub bass, let's go back to the saw. In trance, we're going to be using saw. Now, what is sub? The sub basically is everything here below 100. Right now, there is no information there. So we need to put this a little bit lower. So we're going to use the pitch octave. We're going to put one down. Let's have a look. Okay, our fundamental just went below 100. But I'm pushing the F, as you can see, in the lower corner over here. So if I push A, just five notes higher, I'm already out, so I don't have a bass there. So, I'm gonna go one more octave. And now I have the sub. Finally I can hear some sub frequencies. Now to make it sound like a bass line, I need to do a few little things. First of all, I'm gonna keep this retrigger on. What it means is that every time this wave starts, this retrigger makes sure that it always plays on the same, um, the wave is still the same. I have this little helper here that I always use to visualize my uh, waveforms. It's called LFO tool. Gonna place it over here on my master channel. Let's start with a simple note, so it's gonna be a little bit easier for us. So when I play with uh, the silent, and I play the sound, you'll see, let me just loop this. See, the waveform just looks the same. It doesn't change. If I turn off the retrigger, it keeps on changing. So what basically is happening, that is actually changing the phase of the sample when the sample starts. So the phase button over here basically means the start of the sa of this the sample. So if I push the retrigger and I move the phase, you can see it's changing the position where it starts. And this is a very important button. Not many plugins have that, or it's very awkward on how to use it. Sometimes it doesn't work in other plugins. That's why Silent is one of the best ones to do those very stable sub bass lines for trans music. That's why most of the people use it. So that's why we have this one. So let's go back to our little bass. And we're gonna turn on the re-trigger and I'm gonna fix this quantization so it's on point. Now how do we turn this into a bass? First thing, to, to turn it into a phase you want to cut out those harmonics on top because you want to just have the body on the low end. So what you can do is just use the filter here on the, on the EQ and you want to hear this. But this again sounds very you know amateur so we're gonna use the modulation envelope here and the filter to create a nice plucky, punchy bass line. So let's turn off this EQ for now, or maybe turn off the high end and the low end. And let's have a look. So what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the filter. I'm not looking at anything else for, for now. I just want to have some wave over here, the saw, one voice, re-trigger on. I didn't touch anything else, okay? I'm going to choose my filter type here. I'm going to choose, choose low pass, basically what I did here on the EQ. So now it's going to sound like this. So it basically, see, took some of the harmonics. Now I'm going to put it maybe like somewhere here, like 30%. See, so this is what I wanted to have. Now I want to have it a little bit more punchy, because now all the punch of the bass line is gone, there's nothing. So how do I do that? I'm going to use this modulation envelope to modulate this cutoff and tell it, you know, to move from open to close over a certain period of time. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to assign my cutoff A. So I'm in an A part, so that's my cutoff A over here. For now it's not doing anything because you need to move this slider, which basically is like a destination amount yeah, of how much do you want this to apply. I'm gonna assign a little bit of decay here, which is gonna make sure that this uh, cutoff is just gonna very fast open and close. So, um, where's my coffee? One sec, one sec. Uh, have a look at this, and I'll just go and uh, bring my coffee, all right? Be right back. During lockdowns of COVID-19 pandemic, we all remember those vividly, I believe. I looked for ways on how to bring 
the time-tested and truly working music production tips and tricks to everyone. And we came up with ReadyForMasterclass.com, an online platform where you can learn from me directly and learn how I do my melodies, how I stack leads, process bass lines, and overall how I produce trance and progressive using Ableton Live. There is a wide variety of masterclasses for you to choose from, and we add more every month. So go check readyformasterclass.com and you can also download a free Wavetable sound bank I created for you to create your next big tune. You can hear how those harmonics are coming in. I'm gonna put that cut off a little bit more down. Oh, here we go. Hello. Now, this sounds pretty close to a sub bass. Actually, it's very psytrancy as well. But it is not powerful enough. If I play with my kick, see how, how loud the kick is and how the bass line is. It's not very loud. So I need to make this a little bit louder. The amazing button here is called drive. What drive does, it basically drives it back uh, before the filter, adds some art artifacts to it, but they are not like, you know, horrible. It just sounds really cool. It's like almost like a saturation knob. Look at that. I love that, I love how it sounds. Now, to make it even nicer, over here, I can play around, I can put some warm drive here and put this cut of dub. So now I sound like Giuseppe Ottaviani. Now I sound like Reorder. Now I sound like, I don't know, that's more like Darren Porter. So let's go somewhere in the middle. And you notice that I actually uh, added some release here. Well, in uh, there are some artifacts in Silent that if you don't do this, your bass just doesn't sound so good when it's cut off. So that's why we put a little bit of release here. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of release here also on the amp envelope, which carries the volume, just to get rid of those clicks. Now I'm gonna turn off the kick so we can he see the bass. And you see that the bass is still like a little bit moved here. I wanna move this phase so I have the little click in the beginning. And now this bass just sounds amazing. Okay, let's play around with this cut of a little bit more. Beautiful, a little bit more drive. And now this is the basics for our bass line. It's super stable, it's gonna sound really great, we're happy. If you want to have like, you know, if you want to play around with it and make it a little bit tougher, you can add one voice of the second part oscillator A2 and just one voice of the sine wave just like this and minus one. This is just gonna basically increase the second harmonic. So you can see it, I'm just gonna mute the first one. See, it's this one here, that one higher octave. Uh, people use it often, it just gives the, you know, Bass a little bit more punch in those low mid uh, crossover frequencies. So let's put it up and a little bit lower. Doesn't have to, you know, if those two in the beginning are in a similar height, I'm happy. That makes the bass sound pretty cool. All right, so I'm happy with the, this bass line. Let's see how it sounds with the kick. That's not bad, actually. That's 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 a very nice uh, bass line. Okay, so we have the sub. There is not much we need to do over here in silence, but if we want to be like super particular, we can add some compression, you know, just to make it click a little bit more. It's it's like you know a little bit tougher. 